Welcome, welcome. Now, this is the list. The list that everybody wants to hear. My top 10 most anticipated films of 2023. And there are so many, so many films coming out. Uh, but, you know, I just had to pick 10. Uh, just had to pick 10. Uh, it was a little tough to make, but I think I have it. And, like before, these films are not in any particular order. So let's go ahead and get started. Number 10. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Now... I'm a big fan of Indiana Jones. I even like Indiana Jones in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I don't get why people hate it. Well, I do get why people hate it. But, I mean, I'm not like, oh, Indiana Jones is the end-all, be-all. But I like them. So I like the fourth one, and I really think I'm going to like the fifth one. And after seeing the deep fake they use in the trailer, I am a fan of them doing another trilogy set in between Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Because that way... We can just get a young indie adventure. You get that guy from the Age of Adeline to play him. Deep fake Harrison Ford's face onto him. He can do some of the voice. You do a little bit of the Reese Beecher voice in there as well. And you have billion dollar movies from the get go. So really excited to see what this is. There's supposed to be some type of time travel element involved. I want to see what they're going to do with Shia LaBeouf. See if his character will even be mentioned. Really want to see this. Number nine, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Wow, if this looks great. I can't wait to see. You got Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Gwen, Peter B. Parker's bag. The Spider-Man from the PlayStation games is in there. The Spectacular Spider-Man from the cartoons. The Spider-Man from the 90s cartoons. All these guys were supposed to at least make cameos. You got the Black Spider-Woman. I really want to see where this story is going. Originally, this was going to be a part one and part two. So Beyond the Spider-Verse, which apparently comes out in 2024, is going to be even more bonkers. Can't wait to see where the studio takes this film. If we will get a Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, or Andrew Garfield cameo. Fingers crossed. Maybe. That would be great. That would tie this whole thing in. And we'll see. Maybe Madam Web ties into it. I don't know. Is Madam Web coming out next year or the year after? I'm not sure anymore. I know Craven's next year. But we don't really have a lot of information on that either. I don't know what Sony's doing. But this, the Spider-Verse movies, look great. Number eight, Creed 3. I love the Creed films. Love the Rocky franchise. I think Creed 1 was great. Creed 2 was pretty good. Creed 3, starring Jonathan Majors, looks to be amazing. I can't wait to see uh, how this fight goes and you know what the ramifications will be. Uh, I know Sly has had some issues with the development of this film and how he feels like the Winkler uh, family have kind of like pushed him out and he wants some ownership of the franchise. And I think just for goodwill. Now, they don't owe him anything. They don't owe him anything. He was young. He did this. The movies made money. And they, you know, put forth the money to make it. They own it. They bought it from him. They don't owe him anything. But some goodwill, people. Come on. Just show some goodwill. Be like, look, we'll give you like 33%. We'll give you 33% of this franchise moving forward. And then you can make your Drago film, your other spinoffs, and just, just give Sly a little bit of money. That's all he wants. He wants the the Dave Chappelle deal. like, And I think he's earned it. He's made you guys some money. I'm not saying, hey, he gets complete owner rights of the film. Even 50. It's like, no, look, me being the nice guy, I'm going to give you 30. But yes, I'm excited for Creed 3, and I can't wait to see what it does moving forward. Now, sticking with Jonathan Majors, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This... I hope it doesn't let me know, but this looks to be, one, the best Ant-Man film, and two, a great way to start off Marvel Phase 5. We're really getting some uh, follow-up to Loki with Kang the Conqueror being down in the Quantum Realm, and he is the next Thanos-like character. He's the big bad. He is who we're fighting in Secret Wars. I think, because you got the Kang Dynasty as well. So, we'll see where they go. I really think they probably should have thrown in another Avengers film in there. Because, you know, you got the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars is almost like your Avengers Infinity War in-game situation. So, there should have been one more in between there. So, we'll, we'll see. Maybe they do. Maybe it's a secret and we just don't know. So, can't wait to see Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. Number six, Cocaine Bear. Th that's why. That's, that's why I want to see it. Cocaine Bear. Cocaine and a bear. That 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 what, what that, that's like snakes on a plane level of good, and this is somewhat based on a true story. Of course, you know the bear didn't really kill this many people, but this 
I'm calm. This is the new snakes on a plane, and this is why I want to see it. Just like Samuel Jackson, just from the title alone. You told me there's a movie called Cocaine Bear about a bear hopped up on cocaine. Take my money. I'm going to see it. Number five. 65. Now, 65 stars Adam Driver, who I love. He's a terrific actor. He's one of the best of this generation. Uh, but he's basically like an alien scout who lands on this planet surrounded by hostile creatures. And he says, there are aliens on this planet. We need to be safe. Turns out the aliens are dinosaurs. He's the alien. And he's crash landing on Earth. Now, I it looks good. It looks just like the sci-fi adventure I want to see. It's like that movie After Earth, but better. So we'll see how it turns out. And the plot is kind of reminding me of that old Twilight Zone episode. I don't remember the title, but it follows this astronaut who like lands on this planet. And Earth is at war at the time. And then this person is stalking him. And it turns out that the planet he was on, they killed themselves. He's like, look, we wiped each other out. You live on wherever you are. And he meets the person that's stalking him, and it's a woman. And she's like, my name is Eve. Eve. And he's like, oh, well, my name is Adam. And then he says, what What do you call He's trying to learn her language. Like, What's this dirt stuff you call? We call it, she's like, Earth. Oh, well, this planet Earth will be weird. So that's what the vibes I'm getting. We'll see how it turns out. Number four, Oppenheimer. I love Christopher Nolan. I will see anything he puts out. I like when he does, like, his fantasy type movies more like his inceptions his tenets uh his batman movies but his live action ones are they're they're good twice they're not my favorite but i am interested in learning more about the atomic bomb it has a stellar cast and it comes out the same day as number three barbie it's a barbie movie I never thought I'd be interested in ever seeing a bar a Barbie movie, but it stars Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling as Ken, Simu Liu as Ken, Lisa, Issa Rae as Barbie. A lot of different variations. We don't know if this movie's like a live action universe. We don't know if these are just like it's like Toy Story and these are toys and this is how they experience the world. We know nothing about this film. It's directed by Greta Gerwig, who has done wonderful films. She did Lady Bird. She did a Little Women, and I'm interested to see where she takes the story. If she knocks this out of the park, Marvel, give her a call. Or DC, James Gunn, give her a call with whatever the hell he's doing. Number two, Elemental. Now, like I said, Pixar, they, they, they don't really lose. They don't really lose. And Elemental looks to be an interesting film. It's about a fire girl who falls in love with a water guy in this world where... The elements have feelings, because that's what Pixar does. Like, let's give toys feelings, let's give monsters feelings, let's give feelings feelings. And I like that this is where they're going next. I want to see it. We'll see if it's, it's good. Turning Red, I don't think Turning Red was great, but it was a pretty good story. It was well animated, and I love the main character. So if this is at least half as good as that, I think, you know, it'll be a decent watch. And number one, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part one tom cruise never misses he has proved with top gun maverick that he still has it and he will continue to have it he will probably die on a movie set and god bless this man he's a little wonky with his scientology but when it comes to pleasing his fans in the movie theater he is nothing short of miraculous and this movie looks great he's jumping off of cliffs running on trains and the mission impossible franchise it is one of the only franchises that gets better and better and better with age yeah like the first couple like they're really good uh and then you're like we're gonna take a break comes back oh this is really good it takes a break comes back really good really and they just got better and better and better that's what fast and furious was doing that up until about furious six and then it just it started to go back downhill it reached its peak and now it's going back down mission impossible has not reached its peak it's still going up we'll see how many of these films he does can't wait to see it and that is my top 10 most anticipated films of the year uh remember you can find me on facebook instagram twitter and reddit you can read the reviews that i will post for these films on my blog footfrogllc.com slash flixfrog uh, and please pretty please Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. We got to 100 subscribers this year. We need to get to 200 plus next year in 2023. Join the club. Join Flix Frog. Help us out. And until next year, I'll be seeing you.